In this corner of the Walmart exclusive Marvel Legends Deluxe Ulick, and in this corner the DC Multiverse Calabac Megafig. One's a troll, one is the son of Darkseid, but both were created by Jack King Kirby, and both are shockingly similar. Which Kirby creation will be crowned the best action figure contender? I'm not trolling you, this versus is apocalyptic. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures, and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. For those who don't know, Ulick the Troll made his first appearance in Thor Comics in 1968. Kalibak made his debut, however, in Jack Kirby's New Gods comic for DC in 1970. Starting off with the packaging, and what's interesting is that both figures represent the deluxe packaging for their respective lines. Marvel Legends is just a wider version of their regular window box, RIP window boxes, and the Mega Fig is a much larger version of the McFarlane window box. Name and logo down here, name and logo down here. For Ulick, we get some character art on the side, and then for Calabac, we get his name and see this is from the Dark Side War. We also get another one of those stickers we've been seeing a lot of. On the back of the Ulick figure, we get some comic art and a bio. The strongest and fiercest of all trolls, Ulick the Troll King, as strong and stubborn as the Stone of Asgard. On the back of Calabac, we get some more art. Marvel Legends is more colorful and eye catching. DC Multiverse is simply stated and classy. As a matter of personal preference, I lean towards Legends, but for packaging, I'm calling this round a draw. Moving on to presentation, and Ulick stands at an almost quaint seven and three quarters inches, Calabac stands at a staggering nine and a quarter. There are striking similarities between these two characters, which is the reason why we're here. Ulick has a broad face with a heavy brow, a tiny nose, gigantic under teeth, pointy ears, and a bushy beard, and so does Calabac. Plus a face plate, nose ring, and some yellow paint slop. Their proportions and color schemes are very similar, and just like a Ninja Turtle, each of them only has two toes per foot. The only difference is that Ulick is barefoot. Similarities aside, there are some very notable differences. And I'm not talking about the designs, I'm talking about the quality. Nice looking as Ulick is, he's a lot of reuse from Rhino. The arms are the same, the legs are the same, and while it has been re-sculpted, the upper torso of Rhino was used as the base for Ulick. That said, Ulick's head is new, as is all the sculpted detail for the armor. Hence why Ulick has the outdated hip balls. I'm happy to report that the scale mail is painted and not simply marbleized plastic. Flipping it around, we can really appreciate it. Also, if you're curious, know that orange is not missing paint. It's just a reflection of this. Ulick's hands are new, along with these brass knuckles, and so are the feet, the downside being the visible orange joint. Calabac, on the other hand, is a 100% new sculpt. I'm really impressed with the job that they did on the wild mane of hair. You've gotta love all the Kirby-esque lines in his bandolier. I don't think that there's any extra paint in the belt, but there's a marbleization that does give it a sense of depth. On that note, very nice on the shoulder pauldron. More of that detail around back. Similar to Ulick, he has craggy, hide-like skin, but Calabac's skin tone is a bit more natural than the bright Oompa Loompa orange of Ulick. Well, over here, though, there's more great leather detailing on the gloves, and even better, no ugly wrist balls. Unlike Ulick, Calabac has the good grace to wear shoes, meaning that there's no mismatched color joints to worry about here. Ulick is a nice figure, but for presentation, it should come as no surprise that this round goes to Calabac. Moving on to Bo's ability, and this section's gonna be closer than you might think. First things first, an Ulick's head and a ball joint and a disc hinge. Mind you don't lose the necklace. He can't look up because of his hair, but he can look down a bit. No real tilt, unfortunately, but he does get all the way around. Calabax has a dumbbell joint with an extra long peg. Looking inside, there's lots of room to move. Similar to Ulick, an up's not gonna happen. Down, however, is no problem. A whole lot of tilt, and all the way around. Ulick can only raise his arm up about 45 degrees. Calabac, however, gets 90, and that's with the shoulder pauldron. No rotator cuff, but there's a bit of floating in there. Also, no bicep swivel. Ulick does have a bicep swivel. Both figures have single jointed elbows with fairly comparable and not that deep bends, but Calabac's elbows can swivel, compensating for the lack of bicep. Additionally, both have swivel hinge wrists. As usual, the major difference between a Marvel Legend and a McFarlane is the middle. Olick has an ab crunch and a waist swivel. Calabac, however, has a diaphragm joint. They can arch back this far with Calabac having the slight edge, and they can hunch forward this far with Olick having the edge. That said, whereas Olick can only swivel, Calabac can swivel and tilt. Below the waist, an Olick has a very obvious ball joint. He can kick this high 
high, which is impressive, and he can split this far, which given his girth isn't that bad. By contrast, Cowabak can only kick this high, but he does get a much more impressive split. Ulik has a complete swivel at the waist, and while a thigh cut would have been perfectly hidden here, he does instead have some twist at the hip. Admittedly, it's some of the best I've ever seen on a DC multiverse. Traveling down the leg, and both figures have single jointed knees, with Ulik bending this deep, and Cowabak bending this deep. That said, once again, he does get swivel. He also gets toe articulation, but he doesn't get an ankle ball. Instead, both figures have ankles that simply hinge and pivot. Although there are certain joints and ranges that Ulik excels in, Calabac more than compensates in other ways. For poseability, this round is a draw. Moving on to playability, and Calabac comes with a trading card. Pause here if you want to read it. He also comes with a figure stand, which admittedly seems kind of pointless. Speaking of pointless, and he comes with a weapon that I'm not entirely sure what he's going to do with. I guess it would make his punch a bit more painful. Unless Unless, of course, it's not a weapon. Maybe it's an Apocalypse Marital Aid. As for Ulik, he fares a bit better in this category. He comes with an additional open mouth head. Again, watch the necklace. Alternate fists. And a weapon that's clearly a weapon. Unless you flip it this way. He can hold his hammer like so. Luckily for Calabac, playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Before we dig in, I just want to let you know I'm doing this one a bit differently. I want to see how these figures scale with the figure figures that they're intended to, but I also want to mix and match. In other words, could you fudge Calabac into your Marvel Select Thor collection to fill that Ulik hole? Could you pretend that Ulik is Calabac for your 6-inch collection? Starting with Ulik, and here we have one of the earliest Hasbro Thors, the scale male and ball jointed hips creates a very interesting visual connection to the two. Of course, you can't go wrong with the classic, this is the 80 years version, but for just a few other options, and here we have Thunderstrike, Hercules, notice the similar studded harness, here's Null, the god of the symbiotes, Cosmic Thor, Thor, and Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill is a fantastic segue to Marvel Select. As we can see, these two definitely don't scale, though depending on how big you feel Ulik needs to be, this might work. But with a little imagination, I think this is a very viable option. Bringing back Beta Ray Bill, and that definitely works too. For one more Thor-related Select, and here we have the Destroyer. Moving over from Marvel to DC, and here we have Superman. This is the Angry Laser Eyes Hush version in Action Comics 1000. For Batman, we have three Jokers in Rebirth. Of course, we still don't have a proper Wonder Woman from McFarlane, so here's a couple from DC Collectibles. This is New 52 and DC Essentials. That being said, and here we have Essentials and Multiverse versions of The Flash, Essentials and Multiverse versions of Green Lantern, and Essentials and Multiverse versions of Aquaman. That's fine for 7-inch scale, but as we can see, 6-inch scale might be pushing it. If, however, you want to fudge a look into that 6-inch scale Calabac slot, that's a different story. For Superman, and here we have DC Universe Classics and DC Icons. Here are DC Universe Classics and Icons versions of Batman and Wonder Woman. Here we have a couple of Mattel versions of Aquaman and Green Lantern, but for a couple of Scarlet superheroes, and here we have The Flash and Red Tornado. For a comparison I'm sure you're very curious about, and here's Calabac with Darkseid. For a relative scale comparison, here's Ulick and Calabac with Pete the Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Impressive as Calabac and his little whatever it is is, Ulick simply has more accessories and scales with more figures. For playability, this round goes to Ulick. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Ulik is a Walmart exclusive and retails for $34. Calabac is a wide release and retails for $40. Taking reuse into account, Ulik is a much smaller figure but does have three additional accessories. That said, for $6 more, Calabac is a lot more plastic. For price, I'm giving this round to Calabac, who wins the battle 4-3. Ulik may have been created first, but in this contest of champions, he comes in second. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.